Hey everyone, Psychrius in here. And in this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to caricature everything. Now, when we think of caricature, we usually think about uh, drawing faces and, or at least the human head and maybe the human body. Um, but I think caricature applies to a lot more than just that. So I will do an in-depth tutorial on how to caricature faces. Um, but I wanted to also do this tutorial on how to caricature anything, you know, uh, it could be an everyday object or an animal or anything. Um, so it all comes down to having something to compare to. So here we have a square and this shape is probably impossible to caricature because it's just a square. It's only, you can only caricature it by faithfully representing it. Um, but what we want to look for are things like this. If you have a rectangle, <clears throat> then you want to compare it to a square. And so the square has all equal sides, but the rectangle has a side that's longer. And in this case, it's longer horizontally. In this case, it's longer vertically. And what you want to do is you just want to push whatever direction is being pushed. So in this example, we took the the rectangle and it's like, okay, since it's longer horizontally, we're going to make it even longer horizontally and we're going to squish it vertically. And the exact opposite is true for this one where we stretch it vertically. So again, you have to compare something to something else. And this is really the key of caricature. It's comparison to a standard and then pushing everything else to make that even more emphasized. So uh, for instance, if I took the rectangle and it's tall and I made it taller, that's good. But if I also make it more squished and narrow, that's even better because that's doing two things. It's making the tallness exaggerated and the narrowness diminished. So it's that combination that makes things very exaggerated. So now what I'm going to do is go through some objects. I'm just going to have photos of objects and I'm going to show you how I would caricature them. So to begin with, I'm going to caricature this microphone and you can see that the microphone is tall, like it's more tall than it is wide. Um, so that's what I'm going to focus on. I'm going to create a tall shape and fit the microphone in it. Now you'll notice in the top corner, there is an orange square and this is just a reminder of, okay, that's a square, that's our standard. And how does this compare uh, to the standard? Now you can caricature it away from what its nature is. So for instance, you could make this more fat, but it works only when you're caricaturing it against something else. So for instance, if I had an even more tall microphone right beside this microphone, then if I had to caricature the two of them, I would make this one more fat. Okay, so here we have scissors and it's just, you know, the exact same thing as the microphone, but I'm going to go in the opposite direction. And rather than make it very tall, I'm making it very elongated. Now you might notice some things of interest and they are um, areas like the, the holes in the scissors and um, there's also uh, near the tip of the scissors, you can see how they're slightly opened and also near the joining area where the blade joins the handle. You might notice that there's a bit of an indent. Now all those things I want to exaggerate. So I'm making those more pushed than they really are. And that's another key of caricature is you want to take things that exist and then highlight them, like draw attention to any unique feature uh, you might see. And in this one, I have a toy that it's, I guess it's supposed to be a lion toy. And what I'm seeing here is a little bit different because, okay, so with the other ones, I could just say, is this taller than the square or is it more wide than the square? With this one, what you have to do is sort of consider, well, what is it in relation to itself? Like, Okay, so you have this head and you have the body. Well, 
we have the head being pretty big compared to the body. So I want to exaggerate that quality. And yes, it's more tall. Um, if you don't include the tail, it's more tall than it is wide. And if you include the tail, it's more wide than it is tall. Um, but I'm not going to push those things. I'm going to push the fact that its head is bigger um, than its body. So give it a big head, uh, big eyes, and everything that's big, make it bigger. Everything that's small, make it smaller. Now, what I did with the tail is I made it very fat. And the reason I did that is not necessarily because it is more tall than it is wide. It's actually more wide than it is tall. But I'm comparing it to the body, and you'll notice just how much uh, thickness that tail has when you compare it to the body. It's maybe the body is twice as thick as it. But because that's so unusual, right? Like you would imagine uh, the tail not being half the size of the body. I mean, imagine a dog where the tail is half the size of the body. That's a pretty big tail. Um, and so because that's strange, that's unusual, we have to use our judgment to draw the thing as we see it um, by our own perception. And this is something that caricature has above um, just drawing what you see. It's that we're not cameras. We're not just taking photographs. We have our own ability to observe and we're communicating to other humans who also have uh, this ability to see that tail and say, that's a big tail. And then, okay, go ahead and make it big. Or look at that head and say, that's a big head. And we're not just blindly um, looking at something and saying, well, this is taller than or wider. It's like, yeah, that's the first step. But if you can't do that, or if you're getting a more complicated uh, thing to caricature, then you have to use your own human consideration. So here I have a lamp and yes, it's more tall than it is wide, but not really, you know? When I look at this lamp, I don't feel like, wow, this is a really tall lamp. Um, it almost feels closer to a square just because it's like, it's not really tall and it's not really um, wide either. When I look at the light bulb itself, it sort of fits within a square. And so with this one, I wanted to push it in both directions. I made one where it's wide and one where it's tall. And again, it comes down to your choice. And this is something you can do. You just have to push it one way or the other. So again, in this case, I pushed it towards, um, in one, I pushed it wider and the other, I pushed it taller. Just so you can see, like, you don't have to do it. Um, you don't have to look at something and say, well, here, is this really wider than a square or taller? Because sometimes you get things that are very close. Like, what if you got a square um, or something that fit in, in a square and you didn't want to make it a square? Well, then it's your choice to uh, choose which one you want to exaggerate and then go with that. So here I'm caricaturing an animal and this has uh, a different component to it, which is human experience. And this is probably the last, but one of the most important things. Um, it's much easier to caricature something you have a feeling about. And so for instance, for myself, uh, when I used to do a lot of caricatures, I could take uh, photos of people who I didn't know and caricature them and it's fine I could use a reference but they never turned out as good as the ones where I took photos of people I actually knew um, or have them pose usually it was photographs though um, because you have something you're bringing to the table that other people might not have and it's just knowing the subject and so you look for different things so um, in this one I did the cat and he's got his paw over the sketchbook and uh, his name is Pisiku and it's a case of, okay, I kind of know this cat's personality. I don't want to uh, draw it exact. Like, I, I don't think I captured it perfectly, um, but it's things like, okay, we know, if you look at it, right, the head is smaller than the body, but you know how to make something cute or if you don't, you tend to have these type of baby features, like big eyes, um, a big head, a small body. Uh, eyes on the head are relatively large compared to the other features, so smaller nose, smaller mouth. And so it's like, okay, I'm exaggerating the cute features in this. 
Um, but I'm still using that other thing of comparing it to a box where I need to. So for instance, with the book, it's tall and uh, it's more tall than it is wide. So I did caricature that. Now it's also in perspective and I actually pushed the perspective. So these are all things you have to consider. Um, but to go back to the beginning, the things that are really important are first, compare the thing to a standard. And if you have no standard, compare it to a square. But if you have uh, a standard or a relationship between objects, like multiple objects, then you can compare them to each other. Or within the object, you could compare parts of the object to itself. For instance, this has a big body in relation, or a big head in relation to the body, or maybe the opposite. So maybe there's a big beefy guy with a smaller head compared to his body. Well, I might make his head super tiny and his body really big. And then the other thing is choice. So you do have a choice on what you want to caricature, which way you want to push it. And that says, uh, that's freedom that you get to make your statement as an artist. Like, what am I going to push? Um, it may be obvious, like a very tall thing. It's like, okay, this is tall. This is a tree and it's very tall and I'm just going to make it really tall. And that's, that's good. Um, but it might be also interesting to, to ask, you know, what would happen if I pushed it the other way? What if I made this really wide? How would I do that? That's a bit of a more difficult challenge. And then the final thing is put your own experience in it. Um, in a lot of art, uh, especially when you're doing realistic drawings, we're taught not to put our judgments of the thing into uh, the piece, but rather to just draw faithfully what you see, you know, get rid of preconceptions, get rid of judgments. But in caricature, uh, what is kind of fun is that you don't have to do that. You don't have to get rid of your uh, preconceptions or your judgments. In fact, you can use those uh, to fuel the decision making process. So what do I do? How am I going to play with this? Um, how am I going to push things? And um, make sure you're pushing everything. Like, pay attention to details because those are really, really important. You know, um, it's easy to get the bigger shape. Like, okay, this is wide and this is narrow. But pay attention to little things. Like, okay, uh, maybe there's, uh, for instance, with this book, you know, there's pages and the pages are doing something or there's a bow. And the way I drew the bow is I exaggerated it. I made the bow bigger. Um, because I wanted to draw attention to it and I also wanted to give the cat something to look at. So you're not just copying a photo. Um, you're actually putting a lot of yourself into it. And to me, I think that's why caricature is so great because a lot of people can look at the same thing and if you're just purely drawing what you see, you're going to end up with a bunch of the same image. You know, it's got minor variations, but if you're uh, caricaturing it, everyone's going to see something different and put their own spin on it. So. I hope this encourages you to try caricaturing things, you know? Um, it makes doing still lifes and objects a lot more interesting, and you also get to put more of a, a personality into it, you know? Um, so try caricaturing things, and I hope this helped, and thanks for watching.